Well, thanks for joining us for part three of using a Bell South 100 incubator. We've already talked about setting the temperature correctly, 103 degrees at the top of the eggs. Wait till the lamp just turns off, should say 103 degrees. Now we're talking about uh, how do we understand the humidity in the incubator. Well we understand the humidity in the incubator from two different things. We can understand it from a little bit of observation. If we find that the water in the incubator goes dry after just a few days, it generally indicates that you're in a very dry area. Perhaps you need to have both water channels. If we find that uh, we're using water, say, in the outside water channel, and after two weeks, two and a half weeks, we've still got water in there, that indicates that uh, we perhaps are a little bit too wet in the, in the location we are. Generally, it takes a week to a week and a half for the water channel to go empty. You will fill that up again, and you would normally only have to fill it up that once in the incubation cycle. Three days before hatch, just check to make sure you've got a reasonable amount of water left in the incubator at the bottom to get you through the hatch time. The second way that we do it is using a candling lamp. Now a candling lamp that we use is just a little torch. It's a torch with a soft end on the, on the torch so that we can put it up against the end of the egg and the, and the lamp will seal so that we're able to uh, to seal the, um, uh, the light up so all the light goes through the inside of the egg and illuminates the inside of the egg. So we turn our candler on, a bit of light, and it's going to go through the egg. Now of course, here we are in a very brightly lit room so we can do the video. It's very hard to actually see what you're going to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the picture out of the uh, instruction book that tells you what the air cell should look like, what you should see when you're looking inside the egg. Now you'll see on the little picture there, there are four different little lines of the air cell. When you just put an egg in the incubator at new, and you shot, or you, you just candle an egg that's new, it'll glow a completely golden colour all over the egg, and if you look at the, uh, at the uh, large end, you'll find just a little air cell there, perhaps no bigger than a five cent piece. Now if it's just a small air cell, that's great. It says it's a nice, fresh egg. If it's a large air cell there, right at fresh, it says, hang on a minute, this egg has been stored for a long time, probably is stale and not going to hatch very well. After a week of incubation, the air cell should have gotten larger as the moisture is lost from the egg. By two weeks, it'll have gotten to be quite a lot bigger. And by 18 days, it should be somewhere between a quarter and a third of the size of the egg should be empty. The other end of the egg by that time, of course, is completely black if the chick is growing in there. If it's an infertile egg, it will just look yellow in the other half of the egg. Okay, so you can tell those things from candling the egg, and you can tell that the humidity is about on track. Now, of course, if you look there and find that uh, the, uh, the air cell is only the size after two weeks that, uh, that the little uh, illustration shows is only a week, then that tells you, hang on, uh, humidity must be very high in the incubator. On the other hand, if the air cell is really large, it says it must be very dry. Okay, wet in the incubator, small air cell, dry in the incubator, large air cell. So you can make a judgment then, well, it's dry in the incubator, I need two water channels. If it's wet in the incubator, maybe I need no water channels. So that's the best way that you can judge the humidity of the egg. Learn to read the egg and you will always be successful at what you do. It doesn't matter if it's a simple incubator or a complicated incubator. If you can read the egg through candling, you'll always do well at it. Make sure that we're turning the eggs twice a day during our incubation cycle. And then we hit uh, three days before hatch, we stop turning the eggs three days before hatch. Check to make sure that we've got some water in there and there's enough water in the machine and then we allow the chicks to hatch. Something that we try very, very hard to do is not open the incubator during the hatch cycle because if we go in there and go, oh, there's a chick out, I'll grab one chick out, we've let the moist, warm air out, cold, dry air back in, we'll have more troubles with our hatch. If we do it three or four times, we'll find that some of our eggs won't hatch at all. Thanks very much. We look forward to seeing you in full part four.